Hello reformers and welcome to A Clash of Kings 6.0. Wow, that is a pretty crazy high number for a mod that has been around since 2012. And well, shall we just say that the mod creator has been around since 2012 and working on it actively and oh, just absolutely crazy amounts of changes. And, well, let's, let's take a, a little bit of a look at this version. Now, for those of you that have not seen my previous A Clash of Kings series, I will be placing a pinned comment down in the, the comments. Mm, yeah, redundant. Anyway, yes, I'll be placing a pinned comment down there. And you can check out the playlists, and they're all handy. And there's actually some pretty lengthy ones. I recommend... Oh, what, which one do I recommend now? Probably the... 3.0, is it the 3.0 one? I think the 3.0 one is probably my favorite, the one where we join the Targaryens. I think that one is really fantastic and pretty fun too. And uh, yeah, so yeah, you can you know, just check all those out. Anyway, let's start a new game and I'll just, uh, yes, I'll actually start clicking on things now, should I? Yes, I should probably start clicking on things. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Now, if you haven't seen this before, I would usually read this, but many of you have already seen the sort of start of A Clash of Kings, so if you'd like to read this, then you can of course pause the video, that's the wonders of video, you know, there is a pause button, so you can do that and read what it says here. And now we are in to the... Is this new? Is, is this new? Hmm. I, I actually don't think this is... Is this new? Is it new? I, I'm not entirely sure, but as far as I'm aware, it has never had this character creator. I have a bad memory, just so you know. So maybe, you know, maybe I'm going to get a bit mixed up with some other things. But anyway, here's the thing. I have played as a one-handed sword and shield, sword and board kind of character many, many times. I've played as a two-handed character in this mod specifically, as well as a couple of others. I've played as a polearm user. The polearm user was a little bit, a little bit difficult, maybe not so viable. And I, I've played as a kind of fast, athletic, dodging fellow. Now, the only thing I haven't really played as is a bow user, but I don't really want to play as a bow user because of the obvious underpowered bows that the mod has in spades. And it's a bit weird because I would have thought that maybe there would be something like that. But I think we're going to just play with a probably a man at arms probably a, go for a man at arms as you can see here getting some nice riding power strike iron flesh i think i'm going to go for a two-handed build oh yes i know and a lot of you are going to be really really happy about that because we don't usually play with a two-handed at all and we're going to do a noble in training are we going to do a noble in training that doesn't that doesn't sound very good to me what about a street urchin that might be a little better uh. It's very difficult when you, when you actually see the stats that you're going to be getting. It's kind of like, oh, this is uh, yeah, this is not something I really desire. Yes, exactly. All right, what about a novice? Wound treatment, first aid. Okay, I'll tell you what. I don't really want to be using medicinal skills because we're probably going to be getting someone that is going to be able to do that. So I don't really want to do that either. Oh dear, what about just a page at a nobleman's court? Okay, apparently that is kind of what I'd like to see. And, you know, riding skill, power strength. I mean, I don't really care about the riding skill at all, to be honest, because if I'm going to be using a two-handed, I might actually not even bother going for a horse. But yeah, anyway, what else do we have here? All right, a cell sword. I think we probably have to go for a cell sword here or a blacksmith. What is that actually giving me? What about a blacksmith? Ooh, that gives me a huge amount of power strike. Oh yes, I actually like that quite a bit. And what am I going to be getting for my main main weapons? It doesn't show me, but I am getting a lot in one-handed and literally nothing in two-handed. Oh, that is that is not good at all. Can, can I actually change that around a little bit? No, that is not good. That is not good at all. All right, well, it seems like I'm going to just have to go for that. And we'll just continue onward. And once again, we will be joining Elias Mormont in this adventure. 
And I will be specking into... What will I be specking into? Well, considering I'm going to be a two-handed user, I suppose it would make sense for me to go for some agility here, because I'm going to need athletics for myself to be able to run at the opponent and probably got shot in the face by the nearest crossbow. And let's get one point in pathfinding just to make sure we're a little bit quicker on our feet. And let's make sure that our two-handed weapon proficiency is a little bit higher up. And so we can actually swing a two-handed reasonably well. Now, amusingly enough, the default face is actually what I've used for Elias quite a few times. So let us see if I can just give him a relatively good beard. I need a pretty clean one for the most part. Yes, I think that, I think that might work. I think that, yes, that one is actually going to work. There we go. And he's, he's actually usually quite blonde, so I guess we're just going to go with that. All right, so you can once again pause this if you so desire. And this. And now we will be attacked by the thief. Oh, yes. And I have a... Ooh, I have a maul? Are you... Whoa, did you see that? Did you see that? I'm, I'm not entirely sure if you saw that or whether it was just my display or something. <laughs> if you did see that, then I do apologize. Okay, so... Oh, this is too much. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to do this. Because, do you see how slow this maul is? I'm very worried now. Oh, look at that. Oh, that damage. Oh, take that. Did you see how slow this weapon is? It's crazy. Wow, okay. Wow, we took a lot of damage. But thankfully, we have finally survived <laughs> against this guy. Because the last time I, t I chose Blacksmith... I didn't have enough strength to be able to wield the weapon, and I ended up being, I think it, I think it was unarmed. I ended up being unarmed or something like that, so that was not very good. But yes, let's see if we can get something going here. War brings opportunity, and I mean to seize my chance. Yes, there we go. Give me those 200 coins. A new beginning. Now, what I'm going to do, because the new Clash of Kings versions have been well, rife with huge amounts of new quests and everything. We are going to be doing the quests, but for the most part, we're going to just be doing our own thing and trying not too hard to follow the script, as it were. And can I just say one thing real quick? Sir Adam Whitehead looks very much like a certain Elias. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Anyway. Let's take a look and see what we're actually doing here. I actually have a better weapon. Uh, oh, wow, look at that. That is crazy. The speed rating is 60, but it is able to crush through blocks, which in my opinion is just fantastic. I mean, what, what else can you actually get here that is going to crush through blocks? This thing, and it's a pole arm, which is really not going to work out too well for me. I'd like to get 4,420, please. Thank you very much. That would be fantastic. I'd love to get that tempered greatsword. I have 450. Hmm. 450 on me right now, which is pretty good. I'm actually going to get some armed villagers because, as far as I'm aware, in the newer versions of A Clash of Kings, this wasn't the case previously when I used to play in the old, in the old versions. Apparently, you can no longer recruit villagers from the nearby villages without having a sufficient amount of renown or relation with them or something like that. Probably renown, I think it is. And so, yes, we're going to do that. Anyway, there is a companion here. Hmm, I find that the game keeps my mind sharp. Say, do you by any chance need an officer in your company? I find myself without an opportunity to make use of my considerable lungs, shouting at maggots to fall back in line. I used to command the household guard of Sir Boros Wensington, but he died without an heir, and when his holdfast was inherited by his relatives, they appointed a new captain of their guard. I imagine my rugged good looks, and perhaps more so my Dornish heritance, might have had something to do with it. I've spent the last year playing Savas, waiting for someone worthy to cross my path. All right, well, we could certainly use an able officer, but if he's... Going to be expensive, which I assume he's 1,200. Yeah, there's no way I would be able to afford that, even if I had a huge amount of money at the moment. Now, let's just take a quick look at our... Okay, we need to talk to the Septon. I thought we might actually have to speak to the merchant once again, but no, no, we can just go into the castle here and speak to Septon Garibald. 
Yes, he's almost a biscuit. He's missing an eye to be a biscuit, isn't he? Anyway. I am Samson Garabord. May the Father above watch over you. Now how can I help you? He's, he's actually not that old. I don't know why I'm giving him an old voice. Do you have any tasks for me? No, I mean, um, <clears throat> no, not right now, but I've heard that one of the tenants of Cairn Hall has been seeking a knight to get rid of an, um, white or a grumpkin. Who can tell what goes on in a peasant's mind? He has made his home in the tavern. I also overheard the captain of the guard, Sir Clifford Gower, talk about some letters he needs delivered to some minor lord. Sir Clifford went out hunting this morning, but he should be back in a few hours. Ah, and yes, if you have the time, Elias, I need a letter delivered to an Archmaester Harridan at the Citadel in Old Town. Ah, and we received a raven yesterday. Apparently the Night's Watch is going to deal with this so-called king beyond the wall, and the Lord Commander is asking that all able men join their fight against the wildlings. Well, just look at how many things we're actually getting here. This is pretty crazy. Now, who is this? Hello there. I, uh, oh, what, what, what is what, what is actually this? Because is this a claimant or something? Because this is a new NPC as far as I'm aware. I am the most revered, holy and benevolent High Priestess of Norvos, leader of the band of bearded brothers and guardian of Noom, Nara and Niel. Ah, it is a claimant. I think maybe we have just found our new goal for this series. Because I have never once before in any of my series, I have hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds, maybe even thousands of videos on Mountain Blade. And I have never once done a claimant. I have actually d tried to do it once in, I think, Floris Expanded. That was in 2013. But, unfortunately, it just didn't work out and I decided to abandon that goal which was a bit frustrating to me because I actually thought it was really cool to try and do that but anyway as you can see here she's actually telling us her story I was born on a faraway land further even than the bone mountains the plains of the Jogos Ney and the cannibal sands to a humble family and made a slave when I was but a girl but there is no shame in that the old high priest, Morello, spotted me in the markets and was struck by my beauty. I entered his household and his bed, and there he also learned to respect my intelligence. As he grew older, he allowed me to govern in his stead. First I managed the affairs of his mansion, and later those of the faith. When Morello died, it seemed to the common folk of the lower city only natural that I should succeed him as high priestess. The other priests, however, thought differently. They had me stripped of my titles and clothes and forced me to walk out through the gates with nothing but my shoes. But only after I had been made to service a bear. Really? Okay. Yeah, she doesn't say really. I'm saying really. That's, oh, that's, that's pretty despicable, isn't it? Anyway, they are vile men, and they have chosen the vilest of them all as their new high priest. I once saw him talking with a Kahori, and when they turned towards me, their eyes glowed red, and I could sense a great, dark evil coming from them, surely a sign that they're both demons. They would have to be not to notice my obvious holiness, but exiled I was, and here I am. The common folk loved me, and the deities of Norvos chose me as Morello's successor. Why else would he have taken me into his bed? I must regain my former titles, that I might serve great Norvos, and to do that, I need to gain control of the city. Alright, so this is really cool, because I don't, I mean, that's the thing, in previous versions, I've never encountered this NPC ever before, and I don't think I've ever encountered any claimants in previous versions either, so this might be a new edition. Now, obviously, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure that there's a bunch of you that may have already done a little bit of claimant helping, but yeah, just bear in mind that I haven't played since 4.1, so that's two versions back, and this is, oh, this is pretty cool. Alright, I think we may have found, as I say, our new goal for this series. This is going to be extremely exciting, in my opinion. Alright, so first off, we have our armed villagers, and, uh, yes, I do make the joke every so often that, you know, we have one armed villager. Hmm, yes. Okay, so let's see. Can I? Wait a minute. I can actually... Ah, no, I need 50 renown to do this. Oh, okay, so that has changed. 
as far as I'm aware, because I think before you needed 75. So it seems it may have been dialed back just a little bit, which in my opinion is a welcome change to this new version. Now, the one thing that I think might actually be a good idea is, yeah, we can actually go to the Night's Watch as well. I think I did that in a previous version as well. Mm, I wasn't too sure about that, to be honest, because I did end up actually, I think, failing one of the quests over there, and that was a bit disappointing because I wanted to see what would actually happen if it continued onward. But anyway, hopefully we can do a little bit more successful quest doing this time around. All right, so... Yes, let's have a look here. You can find him in the castle hall of the Weeping Town. Ah, okay, so obviously it's just going to take a couple of hours. Now, I was going to say, let's actually just take a quick look at the recent messages here. Ah, right, okay, so these fellows have concluded non-aggression packs with each other. So what I was going to suggest is that we maybe enroll in a faction's army and maybe decide to do something surrounding that because we can get some pretty easy renown from that, and we can also get some fantastic, well, monetary rewards for it as well, and I think that might be an idea. Anyway, this is the farmer that is currently having a bit of a problem with the white, or the grumpkin, at Cairn Hall. Are you from Cairn Hall? Ah, yes, yes, I am Tom. The elder sent me here to find a knight, true and honorable. Um, yes. Septon Garibald said you've been having problems with a white? Yes, yes. A revenant, a white, a ghost. Saw it myself only three weeks ago. Pale and with red eyes. It was flying through the night in a crate made of bones. Made me shiver, make no mistake. The men of the village agreed with me. We need a faithful man to slay the beast. A knight, like Aemon the Dragon Knight from the stories. Hmm, perhaps I could take a look at this white myself. Are you a knight? Oh, I'm sorry, of course you are. My father always told me the city was full of knights. Go to my village and slay the Revenant Brave Sir. It haunts the old cairn, sure as day. Very well, I'll go and have a look. Now, for those of you that are familiar with that quest, you already know what's going to happen. <laughs> it's rather amusing, suffice it to say. Anyway, as I said, I think it might be a good idea for us to enroll in maybe an army around here, because if I'm unable to, of course, recruit anyone from the nearby villages, I think I actually can recruit from Essos, but they're going to be pretty expensive. So it might be an idea to join as a Stormlander levy. And do bear in mind that we are completely, well, basically at zero. I have no good weapons, no good armor. I mean, I have some pretty decent armor, actually, but the point is, is that this is going to make a huge difference to the amount of things that we can do. All the things, you know, because once we have money and a little bit of extra renown, I will then be able to start recruiting people and actually doing things that I want to do. And obviously, what we are going to need to do eventually is obviously take a look at which claimant we want to help. Because think about it, do we want to help Norvos? I mean, Norvos is all the way, where is, oh, uh, uh, nimbly regain your balance. Ooh, that is fantastic. That is an absolutely amazing event to happen right now because we're, we're basically, you know, we're zero, as I said. We are basically zero and we very much need to get those stat benefits as quickly as possible. You've cut yourself on a rusty knife. The wound looks fine, but perhaps it would be wise to take some precautions. You decide to cover the cut with herbs. You've lost one strength. Really? Really? Okay, so I was just singing its praises, and now I should have probably just left the cut dry, probably but I wanted to do something against the possible infection. I didn't think honey was a good idea because that, doesn't that contain, doesn't that contain sugar? Oh, oh yes, I have no idea. But the fact is, is that, well, we've lost one strength, which is not very good, but it's all right. It's early in the game, as I've said. It's not really a big deal. And maybe we'll be able to get it back in a future event as well. So let's actually see where our current friend, Sir Adam Whitehead is. Seems like he might be an uncle of ours because he looks very similar to what Elias looks like right now. Anyway, where is Norvos? Norvos is 
all the way over here, aren't they? Yeah, there's Norvos. That might actually be a pretty awesome thing to do to try and help a claimant to take that. That might be pretty cool. But, hmm, well, as it stands, I think what I might like to do first is get into a couple of battles. So I'm going to cut away here. And hopefully, Sir Adam Whitehead is going to decide, hey, uh, there seems to be a vassal over there that we could do battle with. Oh, seems like he was having a feast here. Alright, so I've done a little bit of shuffling right here, and now this is just a temporary solution, of course. I'm actually not wanting to join any faction just yet, because I think that I might be able to become pretty deadly by myself. But obviously... Mm, that really depends on how successful I am in recruiting units and then, indeed, you know, leveling them up. You know, because if otherwise then they're not leveled up, then they're just going to be absolutely awful and they're going to get absolutely massacred by everything. But the point is, what I'd like to do is try and level up as high as I can in a particular Lord's army, get a huge amount of renown and a decent amount of money, just enough money to be able to maybe purchase a Weavery and Dye Works or whatever the equivalent to the really, really good enterprise is nowadays, and then head on to maybe Essos or something like that and maybe fight a couple of bandits there and see what we can do about leveling our troops up and then helping a claimant. Now, if claimants have been included in the mod before, this version and I just didn't find them, then by all means let me know in the comments right now where and which claimants you think we should join because I think that's actually a really fantastic idea because I've never done that before as I say and I think it could be a really cool sort of dynamic event that will go on for quite a long time and it's kind of nice not to be the leader of your own faction again you know because I've actually done that quite often nowadays and well we've actually only done that I think mm, I think we've only been a, a very loyal vassal I think once before and that was as I said in the Clash of Kings 3.0 series which was I think one of my favorites which is where we joined the Targaryens of course now I thought I would actually cut back here because there was going to be an, a fantastic piece of battling that we could actually, you know, participate in together. But unfortunately, <laughs> it's just one guy fighting 11 longbowmen. But as you can see, it seems like this fellow does have quite a bit of, well, shall we just say battling experience because he is part of the Westerlands. And I know what you're thinking. Whoa, I thought you were part of the Stormlands reformists. Well, yes, I was part of the Stormlands, but that's the thing. The Stormlands don't really get involved in too much fighting. And I was consistently seeing the entire time I was enlisted with Sir Adam Whitehead, I was just consistently seeing... Westerlands have taken this and have defeated that guy and have captured this guy and so on and so forth. So I thought to myself, okay, we're going to have to join the Westerlands because they seem to be embroiled in huge amounts of battles and really, really fun things like that. But unfortunately, as you can see right here, it seems to me that the AI is deciding just to charge in, which is absolutely fine. I have no problem with the AI making quick movements and fast decisions, orders, whatever you want to call them. But, unfortunately, due to me being a slow peasant, which is, <laughs> which is basically what we are right now, yeah, I'm unable to catch up, and as a result, unable to get experience. But we are gaining some money, and we are going to be gaining some renown as well. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut away until we are in battle with an enemy vassal, which in that case is probably going to be a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more fun too. All right, so here we are. We are against an enemy vassal, finally. And I'm actually unsure. Can I can I actually tell them what to do? No, that is something that I obviously did not try because they're not highlighted, and I would have assumed that a peasant is probably not going to be able to order around the king's armies. You know, that's certainly not going to happen. Or is it? Are they? Are they? Are they? Act no, no. I, I don't think they're actually listening to what I'm saying because, I mean, there's this archer who's just running along merrily. He's just like, oh, there's not a care in the world. And, uh, yes, he seems to very much just want to 
shoot someone. Apparently that's his bloodlust taking over. Oh yes. I remember it fondly, having having bloodlust like that. Oh yes, in my youth. In my youth. Oh yes. Anyway, Elias. He has not really done too much. I have gained a little bit of inventory management, because we actually did level up due to, I think, just passive experience gain from the battles that we've so far done. And yeah, let me just say that our Lord has only done battle with a couple of village farmers, peasants, and the like around the area that we're currently in. And this is a welcome change. Now, I'm not entirely sure if he is going to charge in, because as you can see right here, we outnumber the opponent considerably. We have 83, well technically 84, and they have 42, which is exactly half of what we have. So, theoretically, these guys should be just charging straight on in here. This fellow, I mean this enemy lord, only has, as far as I am aware, 60-something units total. That, that's all he has. That's all he has. And these guys are just like, oh no, we're just going to wait here. We're just going to wait here and do nothing. Yes, apparently they are just going to wait here and do nothing, which is not exactly good. It is not exactly good. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut away again, which is not exactly fantastic. This is also kind of a reason why I was a bit, maybe a bit dubious to enlist in a Lord's army, because these kinds of situations happen quite often and yeah I'm probably gonna have to change a couple of settings in the camp menu to be able to ensure that these kinds of things are a little bit streamlined in the future so I'm gonna cut away until these guys decide to charge in all right so here we go we actually have a little bit of action here and now i know what you're thinking doesn't this look like a different battlefield yeah it's actually a different battlefield you know what i had to do i had to literally retreat and come back in just to get these guys to actually do something because let me just tell you the environment and the battlefield structure was the main reason why our forces were really not doing anything because if you took a look at the previous battlefield, they couldn't see the opponent, and the opponent couldn't see us. And so that basically means that they're just going to stand there forever. They basically stood there for another 10 minutes not doing anything. So, yeah, it really helps when the archers uh, can actually see <laughs> can actually see the opponent, because that means the archers are going to start firing away, and it also means that that is then going to provoke some sort of reaction from the opponent and that's pretty fantastic so yeah I'm pretty happy with that now that means I'll be able to get a little bit of experience here as well which I very much appreciate as you can see here these guys are wearing armor that is extremely difficult for me to deal with as you can see I can't even dent it I have five in power strike and I can't even dent them that is pretty crazy I'm actually doing pretty well considering I'm using peasant armor and stuff so I'm kind of wanting to stay alive a little bit, but these chainmail guys, they're very difficult. Oh yes, they are very difficult. These guys, not so much. I can actually deal some pretty decent damage to these guys, so hopefully I'll be able to get a couple of kills on them. Ugh, that's not really going to work out too well if some of our forces continue to steal my kills. Ah, no, there's no such thing as stealing kills in Mountain Blade. I mean, certainly not in the single player at the very least, because think about this. These guys are doing all the damage. If it was just me, I'd just lose. <laughs> so, yeah, it's probably a good idea for me not to complain too much. Ooh, look at that. Wonderful damage. I actually really like this weapon we're using right now. I mean, it's not something that I'd want to use for the remaining bits of the series. But it's actually, it's actually pretty viable. So, not too bad. Anyway, there you go. Four morale for us. And, well, obviously I took zero casualties, but our allies took 18 deaths and the enemy took 67. I killed three, which equals our lord. Our lord is actually Leo Lefford at the moment. Are you serious right now? Wow, that is pretty crazy. Okay, so let me just say. The previous battles, okay, peasants some deserters and some village farmers. There were three battles that I did off screen that I basically didn't participate in because obviously they have Westerland's knights and the knights are able to catch up to the enemies very, very quickly before I'm even, even able to get there, right? Well, those fights gave more loot, as you can see here, than this vassal. 
So I can only say that this vassal is absolutely awful. <laughs> I'm actually not sure what's going on with that. Anyway, we're going to speak to this fellow and maybe I'd like to be reassigned to another division. What does that mean? Oh, okay. I, I actually did not ask anything before that, but I guess it's because I'm a new recruit or something like that. Yeah, that's probably if you have upgraded into a particular unit, so in other words, infantry or an archer or something like that, and you want to go down the separate route, which is actually pretty cool. I didn't know that there was functionality for that. But anyway, let us return to duty and see where Leo Lefford takes us. Oh, no. Ignore them. Yes. I did actually have a an event that was Wild Onions. Yes, Wild Onions came up, and I was like, oh, Wild Onions, they, that, that sounds really nice and tasty. Uh, sorry if you don't like onions. But anyway, point is, gave us five one-handed weapon proficiency, which I suppose is pretty good. I mean, it's not as good as gaining one agility. Well, it's not as bad as losing one strength, so I suppose it's not too bad. Anyway... That seems to be it for this episode. I would have liked to have done a little bit of a longer one, but as you can see, Leo Lefford is a little bit indecisive when it comes to where he wants to go and who he wants to attack. I would have appreciated him attacking one more vassal before the end of the episode, but as you can see here, he is attacking... Oh, he's attacking Sir Walder Frey. Ah, well, that's fantastic. That means we can do another one before the end, and I'm going to just... Wait here a second while these guys get into formation. Alright, so against Sir Walder Frey we are, and as you can see, we have a river between us and victory. And we are just going to need to charge them. I don't know whether the Westlands Knights are going to decide to do this, of course, because you can see here that they seem to be a little bit dubious about crossing the river. But I can only hope that maybe I will be able to somewhat bait them into a, into some sort of resolution here, because you can see here that there aren't any cross... Oh, never mind, they do have some longbowmen. That's fantastic. They have some longbowmen, so that might make a difference, but you can see here that there's only, what, two of them? Are you serious? Oh, look, there's... There's our brethren. Hello there, Westerlander Levy. I'm exactly the same rank as you. Yes. You can see, I mean, literally, oh, awful gear. Absolutely awful gear that we have on right now. Well, as you can see, it seems like our units are a little bit afraid of water. Oh, no, one of them doesn't. Oh, look at that. He's frolicking around in the water very carefree and... Yes, he's uh, not really having too many difficulties. You can see here, though, that we only have two archers, and that is making things, well... Very difficult, because if our archers were actually able to deal some damage, then we might actually have a quicker resolution to this. But I'm going to continue to cut away here and hope that our units are eventually going to get tired or impatient and then charge in. All right, so it seems literally just what I, I don't even know, two seconds after I crossed the river that they then decided to charge straight on in and I'm very surprised about that because I actually thought to myself I'm probably not going to get these guys to charge in anytime soon but yeah it seems like that we were able to do so so that's pretty nice otherwise I am stumbling yes I am stumbling and that is exactly what Elias has been known for in previous series he has been known as Sir Stumble oh yes Sir Stumble and of course the Reaper of Crow's Nest and hopefully we'll be able to acquire a couple of titles like that in this series as well. Now, if I could just deal enough damage to maybe get... Uh, yeah, I was going to be like, oh, I'd like to get another another kill there, but no such luck. But yeah, we're, we're going to be leveling up pretty easily, I think, in this army, because it seems like the Westerlands does have some pretty good units. I mean, we know that they have pretty decent units right here. Oh, wow. Against routed enemies. They really want to attack the three routed enemies. I kind of wish I could auto-resolve these particular battles, but as you can see, there were no other options. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this episode off here, and in the next episode... We're going to continue a little bit of our enlistment. I'm obviously going to do some of this off screen just so we can advance in rank and we can see a little bit more about the 
you know, the better gear and the better things in life. And after that, we're probably going to respectfully ask to be dismissed from the army. And then we'll probably try to pursue a weavery and dye works or something equivalent to that. And hopefully at that point, we can pursue a couple of quests and things like that. So I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.